Welcome back everyone. This is part two of my tutorials on Touch Portal. As I explained in the first one, I freaking love Touch Portal. I use it a lot for not just streaming, but recording, as well as sometimes when I'm just playing Valorant because I have a plugin that allows me to control my Discord. Sometimes I use it just to control my Spotify. I also use it to control DaVinci Resolve which I use for video editing. And I have a plugin that allows me to use it for that. Uh, there's so much more I can do with it, and I want to show you some of those things today. So today we're gonna cover events and plugins. If you don't know how to find Touch Portal, how to set it up, or how to even create a button, I've already made a video about that, and you can see that here, and we will continue on. So today, let's look at events first. So this is the page of my events. As you can see, I, ha I have a lot of them. Just a, just a little bit, right? I'm not obsessed or anything with them. No, no. So events are basically buttons that you don't have to press. The trigger for them to start is not you pressing a button, but for something else to happen. For example, whenever I get raided, I have one that will switch it from whatever game I'm on to my full face cam scene. That way I can introduce myself, tell them what I'm about, and then get back to the game. Uh, I also have one for basically if I get like hate rated or full about it. I have an SOS one that will allow me to do a bunch of things all at once so I don't forget any of the steps and I can protect my stream and my community. Uh, I have different ones for channel points that will allow me to pop up an image as well as play a sound. Um, I have ones for just ending my, my stream, what all happens then, uh, starting my stream. Like, there's just so many things you can do. So I want to make sure that we can cover this. Uh, you can also, in a way, create your own sound alerts. I know sound alerts is a very popular extension on Twitch. I use it myself. But you have a limited number of spots for it. And so I use Touch Portal to get around that. Um, I have the audio files for some of the sounds that my stream uses all the time. And so I created basically commands or um, channel points, redeems that they can use, and it will still play those sounds without using sound alerts. So how do we create an alert? First, you go to the alert tab, add alert, and it'll pop up this new window here. This should look somewhat familiar to you if you've made buttons before. The only thing is you don't have the option to edit what the button looks like because it's not a button. So, <laughs> again, my kid's in the background, sorry guys. Um, but you have all the same things that you would for a button on the actions that you can add to it. Okay, so we're going to make a button that will allow us to uh, play a sound every time we go to our full face cam scene. So we're going to say this is the high face cam just so we can label, label it. Nobody's going to see this label except for us. And so we could go back through and, and realize which event is which because after a while you get a lot of them. We're going to go to events. So uh, some of these that are gonna pop up are because of plugins that I have, and I'll cover plugins later. Some of them are for OBS. Some of them is for um, Stream Elements Live, or Streamlabs, or Twitch, or values, or all kinds of things that you can have. So we're gonna look at the OBS. We want our trigger to be every time we go to the face cam scene, that's when this sound is gonna pop up. So on scene selected is what we're gonna need. When OBS active scene is, face cam is the name of the scene that I use. We're going to go to OBS, source visibility on this one because I have it set up so I have a scene that contains all these sounds and 
that that's just basically where they live. And that scene is nested into every other scene. So we're going to show the scene in our sound scene. And I want it to do, like, hi. Uh, it's literally what it sounds like. It's a recording of me saying, like, hi. I'm also going to have it do a wait command so we can turn it off. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can turn it off. Um, if we don't, if we instantly put the hide one, it's not even going to play because it's going to instantly turn on and off before anything happens. So, oh, I am going to add another one. So we can hide sound, like hi. And then we're going to go to logic or wait for a timer. I want it to last for 10 seconds. Oops. And then we're going to move that in between. So it's going to show, wait for 10 seconds, and then hide it. And that's perfectly OK. We're going to save that. You should see it all the way at the bottom here. And then if you have your tablet or phone or whatever device you're using hooked up and it's on the green, like I do, then the events will work. So if I go to my face cam, like, hi. So you just heard the sound play and it just turned off. I just watched it disappear from the visibility of the scene. That's what we wanted to set up. That's what we wanted to have happen. So different events can do all kinds of things and it's fantastic and it's wonderful and I just, I love it. I love events. They make my job as a streamer easier. It means that I don't have to worry about when I start a stream, am I muted? Is my Discord music uh, muted? Those are already done. Uh, when I go to the face cam or to the game scene, it automatically unmutes those. So I don't have to worry about those. Uh, when I end stream, it automatically mutes them again. So when I go to start again, I don't have to worry about it. It automatically plays different sounds for me. It automatically um, like triggers different things to happen. And it's just, it makes it so much easier. So you don't have to worry about like 10 different buttons every single time and possibly missing one. It automatically does it. So events are, are a lot of fun to play with. I hope you get to play with them and have all the fun ever with them. Now, I'm gonna delete that one real quick. And we're gonna look at plugins. Because I don't actually want it to say like hi every time I go to my face cam. That would be annoying for me at least. Uh, so let's look at plugins real quick. Plugins are third party add-ons to Touch Portal. Touch Portal is not responsible for anything that a plugin does. My kid in the background, so sorry. Um, however, with that dis disclaimer in the way, if it's from the website, from the actual Touch Portal website, there's a good chance that it is safe, right? Because a lot of people have downloaded it and used it and approved it and, and everything else. So if you get it from their actual website, you're most likely good. I've yet to come across the one that was horrible, to be honest with you. So how do you find the plugins? Well, If we go to, hold on, I need to hide this real quick. Boop. Go to the website touch-portal.com or just search touch portal into Google. It'll be fine. You're gonna go under downloads, but you're not gonna click downloads yet or else it's gonna go to download the actual touch portal program. You're going to go down to plugins. You use the same method to find different pages that other people have created that you can add to your own or different icon packs so you can add different icons to your touch portal. So we're going to go to plugins. These are different plugins that you can use. Uh, some of them that I do use that I absolutely love is the touch portal discord. 
This one has changed my life when it comes to playing Valorant because Valorant has anti-cheat things set up, so some of your Discord uh, keybinds and everything does not work. But yet, if you use Touch Portal, it will still work. So I highly recommend this one. I used the Spotify one so I could mess with my Spotify. I use this open hardware monitor so I could check how my computer's doing. Sometimes if it's running a little weird, I'll go ahead and have that open while I check. Uh, there's all different ones. There's one for, um, oh my gosh, I'm spacing on the name, I'm so sorry. There's things for like uh, DaVinci Resolve. I'm pretty sure I found one for Photoshop the other day. I don't see it off the top of my head. Um, but you can, you can find different things like that. Okay, so if you wanted to add a plugin, let's say the Discord one, for example, you would click on it. Sometimes they would have a tutorial for you. They might have photos for you. They might have some instructions in here. So I highly recommend you look over this page. There's normally a go to website. So you would click on the website. It will either download it right away for you or redirect you to another web page like this one does. And you could download from here. You can also go in and see all the information, like what the buttons do and if there's a sample page and things like that. Each one is slightly different, so keep that in mind. You can also go from here and go to pages. So these are different pages that are free uh, that you can actually use with the different plugins or just to have. Like here's the Spotify one that goes with the Spotify plugin. If a plugin has a page connected to it, it will show up in that uh, scene basically so it says related access this is the plugin that i've already showed you uh, that goes with this page there's one for premiere pro there's the free obs um icon packs and everything there there's the davinci resolve one that i use there's zoom there's voice meter there's all different kinds i highly recommend going through all of them and looking you can also go to icon packs and see the different ones that people have created. There's different like vanilla ones and Photoshop and Valorant looking ones and all kinds of things. Another thing that I found that you could do is since you can add, <laughs> my kid is so crazy, I'm so sorry. Um, since you can add from a file some Stream Deck icons, not all, but some, actually works on Touch Portal. This is not a fully recommended by Touch Portal thing, but it is a possible thing. I have found that the Stream Deck ones that are animated are harder for your Touch Portal. It makes the pages load slower, so if you find static images, those tend to be better. But they're basically just images, and so you're able to add them to the button, which is handy. But that's how you add plugins, uh, or get plugins, pages, and icons from the website. How do you get them into your Touch Portal? Good question. So now we're back into Touch Portal, and let's say you're back to the pages. This is the DaVinci Resolve page that I have downloaded. If it's a page, you're going to click this cog wheel over here and there'll be a menu that popped up. It's not showing up here, but it, it shows up for me in real life. And it'll say like set as default page or move page, duplicate, duplicate page, rename page, things like that. But there'll be a import page. You'll click it. It will bring up your Windows um, file explorer and you'll find where you have saved that page and you can add it that way. And then it will start showing up in your list of pages in this menu. For plugins or imp uh, icon packs, if you click on this cog wheel, there will be another menu that pops up here. Either click the import icon pack if it's an icon pack or import plugin. However, if you click on the settings one, I don't know why it's not showing. Oh, I know why. Hold on. There you go, now it's showing. <laughs> like, why is it not showing the menus? So if you click on settings, you could bring this up and you could go to plugins to add them here. 
What show? Yeah, there's there's the menu. So import icon pack, import plugins, or import page. It's how you add them into there. Every time you add a plugin, it will pop up a window asking if you want to trust it, um, saying basically it's a third party thing, touch portal is not responsible, all that kind of thing. If you hit trust, that window will only pop up the first time ever that you put in the plugin. If you say okay, Every time you open Touch Portal, it's going to ask you the same question over and over and over again. Just as a heads up. And that should be it for everything, guys. So you now, if you've watched both videos, know how to download Touch Portal, how to add buttons, how to add events, how to add in the plugins and the pages and icon packs, and how to get started creating things. So definitely good luck. If you have any questions, comment on either one of the videos. If you want to see a tour of what mine looks like, I will gladly show you. And I hope you all do well. Thank you!